Greetings Scratchers and welcome to another super fast Scratch tutorial. In this case it's intended for my Redlands Conservatory class. However, absolutely anyone is welcome to come and check it out. So this is the amazing Spyro Gyro which is my third project I've put together using Scratch. And this is based on the old idea uh, that they used to have spirographs when I was a kid way back in the olden days. And they would have a pen which would snap into a gear and when you would spin the gear around on a table it would make all kinds of interesting patterns. So that is what this program is going to do using the pen tool in Scratch. So the commands are very simple. The up arrow starts the gyro, the down arrow stops the gyro, and if you want to pause any of the patterns that you create along the way, you can click the pause button. So let's just start off by hitting the up arrow and we will see it generate a pattern. So as we can see that's a pretty wide pattern and the longer you leave it running the more it's going to fill in the page. That's actually not one of the more interesting patterns that I've seen it do. So let's go ahead and hit the down arrow and looking at our settings here we've got some pretty wacky settings. We will adjust the knobs by turning them using the mouse and when you get to a number that you like and this will all be experimentation as far as anything can be. There's so many possibilities, millions of possibilities. When you find a number that you like you just slide off of the knob. The knob will only move as long as the mouse is touching it. So I don't know. I'm going to take a guess here. My class came up with some of the coolest looking patterns I've ever seen. So there we go. We've got some lower numbers which sometimes yields interesting patterns. I'll hit the up arrow again and let's see what we get. Oh yeah, very different pattern. A lot of them are very 3D. They look like a room or a tunnel or space. And anywhere along the way, like right there, it's super beautiful. We can hit the space bar and we can pause it. You can use your print screen button if you would like to print up the patterns that you create. Hitting the space bar again toggles that off on command and we can have it continue to, there we go, <laughs> continue to create all sorts of different patterns based on our, our offsets there. So going back, we hit the down arrow. And that is all there is to operating your Spyro Gyro and I challenge you to create the most interesting pieces of art with it that you can. I'd love, love to see them. So let's go ahead and we will close this out and let's jump down to our Scratch programming environment and take a look at how we would construct something that does that. Uh, one note is I did that sort of fancy graphic interface for the one we were just looking at, but actually a simple programming environment uh, is in a lot of ways more fun since, hey, you guys are programmers. So let's go ahead and we will get rid of our cat as usual. Let's delete that sprite. And what we're going to do for our first sprite, uh, we're going to go ahead and create this sprite actually doesn't matter all that much. It can actually just be a single black dot if you'd like it to be. I happen to make a little crosshairs just for fun because I thought uh, crosshairs would be, uh, uh, for something that was drawing, would be an appropriate uh, sort of a sprite. So we'll just do a little crosshairs there and really no reason to waste time on this because all this sprite is going to do is it's going to drag around our pen tool. So we'll say OK, there's our sprite. Our background we don't have to do a thing to. Uh, it can just be white uh, when we're drawing on it. Let's zip over to control and we'll bring down our usual starter program when uh, the flag is selected and jump over and let's define our starting point. So since we want our cursor to jump directly to our starting point, We'll use the separate set command, set x to 0, set y to 0. Now in the pen tool commands, uh, because we may rerun the program, we want to clear our screen each time. So we'll make our next command clear, and then we'll install our main loop. So our main loop, we'll just do a forever loop here. I think that's going to work fine. There we go, forever loop. And you're going to be surprised how incredibly simple this is. Jumping back to pen, uh, we will do pen down. When you drop your pen, that's when anywhere your sprite moves, it's going to leave a line the size that you have defined for the pen behind. Uh, and we're going to need to create a variable because we want our design to change as it goes along. So let's make a variable. Let's call it augment, augment, uh, so that we can have that change and get larger and larger as it runs. Um, and then we better set that variable. So we'll set uh, augment to, you know, I'm going to move that just for fun, although it doesn't really matter the order. I just have a programming style that I'm getting used to on Sprite. Uh, we'll set augment to 1 so that the first time our Spirograph starts off, it'll start off with a move of, of 1. Okay. Now, we don't want the Spirograph to draw over the same position too many times. So let's go ahead and we'll go back to our controls again. And we will limit uh, for the colors chosen uh, the number of repetitions. This is one of the things that you can definitely change uh, as you go along. So let's go and we'll put in a repeat command and we will say repeat. Uh, you know, this can be however many times you want it to, to run through the pattern. I think 500 
was working really well for, for what we put together. And now it's nothing but move commands. So let's go ahead and we're going to bring down a few move commands. We can even build it out here. So just for clarity, we'll go ahead and we'll have uh, four move commands. And then we're going to use turn commands. So here we have our turns. And we'll bring those out and put them in between. And the whole idea is that, for instance, if you were going to make a square, you could do it by having it come out, turn 90 degrees, uh, and then move a certain distance, turn 90 degrees again. And as long as you turn 90 degrees uh, the correct number of times, you will have made a complete square. Uh, because we want to have our, uh, and I'll go ahead and let's see, we'll put this, this whole block. Did I get the right number there? Let's see, how many times do we want it to go? We want it to go probably four times, so four moves is probably going to do it. So what do we get? One, two, I'm getting ahead of myself. Three, four, oh, that's, that's going to be just fine. You know, we can get rid of the last turn because it, we're actually going to be back to where we started from with this block of moves. So I'll put that in under repeat. So it's now going to drop the pen and come out and make these turns uh, the correct number of times. Since we want to change the size of the turns, uh, that's where we're going to use our augment variable. So let's bring that out and we will replace the 10 steps uh, in our move with augment on all of our move commands. So that each time it moves, it's going to move by whatever our variable value is. You're going to dig this. This is really super fun. Okay. So after it's gone through and, and moved these steps, we want it to augment. <laughs> we want it to change in its value. So let's go ahead and we will set augment after it's gotten through all of this. Set augment and we'll use our operators so that we can have it augment uh, to augment plus one. So each time it goes through our loop here, it's going to change the value of our variable by one. So that's going to make a different pattern each time that it goes through. So just for fun, let's use another pen command and we will change our pen color. How does that sound? And we could change our pen color by, well, let's just have it change by one each time. Now there are 200 colors you can select from as far as your pen goes in Scratch. So if you want to make your pattern in a certain color, you can specify a certain color. So now that we're through our main loop, uh, we want it to go ahead and repeat it with our new set of colors that we've just defined. So there's only one simple thing we need to do. Let's go ahead and we will again set our X and our Y back to where we started from. Since at the end of our pattern, we're going to land in a different place. You'll see what I mean. Uh, set Y to zero, set X to zero again. And we don't want our pen to draw uh, while it is resetting its position. So let's go ahead, we'll select pen up. So we'll bring our pen up and away from our paper there. And we can, once again, we can set our pen color back to the original value. So let's do that. Set pen color to one. That way when it restarts the pattern, actually those can be in either order that they would like. And we are done with our program. Uh, this now will, should run, hopefully, when we click our, our green flag, it should go out and it should make a set of squares that get larger and larger by one each time it runs through the routine. So let's take a look. Are you ready? Drum roll, please. Aha, we've got a spiral. Got that funky spiral pattern going. Okay, so let's stop it. And this is going to show you the only single modification that you will be making to this. And this is the most fun modification. So the number of degrees that you turn is what is going to determine the pattern. Let's go ahead and we'll turn it into squares. Squares would be 90 degrees uh, if each corner was 90 degrees. Uh, and what we just did was 15 degrees, so it was much wider and it formed kind of a clumsy circle. So let's try it again now. Um, clear is up there, so we're good. And there we go. There's our beautiful, beautiful square pattern. So it'll draw our four squares. Boy, they seem to split. They almost seem like they're turning in a lot of ways. And after it's done 500 steps, as shown here, it's going to go ahead and reset and do another set of 500 steps. So this is what I meant by actually the most interesting patterns and the greatest level of control are with the simple program, this one. And by simply going in and changing the number of degrees in your turn, you can get an incredible number of spirographic patterns. Now the main spirograph program that I showed there at the beginning of the video, I'm going to put that up on the website which is shown at the end. And all this is is that exact same program except I modified it so that the knobs change the values of the turn command there that you're changing manually. This actually doesn't work any better. It just looks a lot cooler. And if you would like this program and to modify this program, 
feel free to come and visit the webpage and download it. And while you're doing that, we will enjoy one last spirograph. Hey, let's put in some wacky values. My kids like to do this, just jump back and forth and make some completely wacky values. And let's hope that the end of the video here has the most interesting of the spirograph patterns. And thanks for watching. I like that one.